92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5, audio and video live on RTC Channel 4, and that can only mean one thing. Yes, indeed. Scott is in the studio. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Good morning, sir. Morning. Nice to have you back. It's good us. to be here. Hey, thank you. you. You really mean that, too. I do. I, I can do. tell by the way you said it. Like, <laughs> really coffee that brings me in. Yeah. That <laughs> goes all the way. And if you have a smartphone or an Android device, you can download the TuneIn Radio app or something similar to that. Take us wherever you happen to be going, which today will be to First Federal Savings Bank, where you can say good morning or good afternoon to Evan Gottschalk, the president. Evan, good morning. Hey, good morning, Tom. Thanks for being here. Hey, I'm really happy to be here this morning. Good. Everybody's happy to be here this morning. What a great vibe in the studio this morning. I tell you, it's in the, the right morning. direction, isn't it? Wow. Well, normally I'm here. There's snow swirling outside. <laughs> you know, it's a little grimmer outlook. But, uh, you know, it's summer. State fair's coming up. we got a yeah. lot to be thankful for right now. We do. Indeed we do. We are going to be speaking with Leanne Isinger, uh, who is our guest this morning. And we're going to be talking to her about the state fair going on in August. She is our local state fair board member. She is indeed. Has been for a year or two. Uh, a few. We'll find out a little more about All that right. here in a few minutes. But we're happy to have her this morning. Hey, uh, First Federal's been hosting a guest all week, Tom. I don't know if you noticed. Um, Loyal the Painted Bison made his way over oh, to cool. uh, First Federal. Yeah, cool. He's been grazing around in our vestibule yeah, for He was an award week. winner in the parade, too. That's right. Yeah. Painted up really nicely. Uh, part of the Indiana Bicentennial Art Project and um, in partnership with United Way. So First Federal was lucky enough to have him join us for a while and he's... Uh, Not a lot of upkeep necessarily. <laughs> Not as much as we were fearful of. He's pretty clean. Pretty clean animal. So that's been kind of fun. Hey, our trivia this morning is uh, when did Indiana have its first state fair? Ooh, wow. Now I've got an expert here this morning so I'm hoping my you give date me a, is correct. Do you give me a multiple choice on I, this? I will. Okay, thanks. Since you. you're requesting. Uh, a, 1852. Okay. B, 1868. Or C, 1892. Okay. I'll work on that. Okay. All right. Um, well, it's the middle of summer, kind of in the dead heat. So, normally, as a Cubs fan, I'd be saying, oh, there's always next year. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not right this year. No, it's not. The Cubs have the best record in Major League Baseball yes, again. They, they uh, reclaimed the spot. They kind of uh, took a nosedive towards the All-Star break with 24 games in 24 days, which sounds That's really lot. rough when you're playing outdoors in the summer. But they they were 57 and 37, and they're just a squeak above the Giants, who've kind of had a little tough tumble of their own. They've uh, played better since the All-Star break. As they have. Yeah, that looks like they got a little bit of rest, and uh, they're going to have a couple players coming off the disabled list that have been out for a little bit. One of them is a leadoff hitter center fielder Dexter Fowler. He's a guy they brought back random, kind of randomly this year who was on the team last year and uh, they're 47 and 20 when he's playing. Wow. And 10 and 17 without him so. Tells you a lot. Yeah I think they're glad to get him back from injury. And uh, another little trivia question. This one I'm not going to give you any choices about. Oh gosh. How many times have the Cubs been in the World Series since they last won it in 1908? <laughs> <laughs> Bet you I count it on one hand. <laughs> Is it less than one? <laughs> no. It's more than one hand, too, Scott. Is it really? Oh, wow. It is. wow. Oh, I didn't know that. Seven times. Wow. Since then. And they they had won it twice in a row in 07 and 08, and they were in it in 06, too. But seven times since then. Hmm. That really surprised me. Mm -hmm. So oh, they're, the they're two and. Two and seven in World Series play? Uh, I think so. <laughs> Ouch. Two and eight, because I lost it two, in those two, That's right, two and eight. Whew. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, let's do it. All right, uh, upcoming in our in our local community, the Fellowship Guild of First Baptist Church will have their Dairy Queen night Wednesday, July 27th from 6 to 10 p.m. Nothing better than getting ice cream at 9.45 right. p.m. Get the kids to bed, someone run out and get something. Our Dairy Queen does a great job and appreciate all the charitable nights that they do to help help uh, different organizations in the community. When they do that, 10% of the proceeds go to that group, so it's going to the First Baptist Ladies Group on July 27th. Okay. A blues benefit featuring the Johnny Bergen Trio is Sunday at the Hardery in Kiwana. Tickets for the show are $5 and you can get them at the door. They'll be serving barbecue at noon 
and uh, that's when an outdoor acoustic set by Treated and Released is going to occur. And uh, at 2 p.m., the Johnny Bergen Trio will be on the stage for two sets. So all-age event, alcohol-free event. You can bring the family. It should be a great community time. Indeed. Okay, anyone curious about learning to fly or wanting to prepare for the knowledge test for the FAA is invited to a free series of ground school class classes. And those begin on August 2nd at 7 p.m. at the Fulton County Airport Terminal Building. They meet weekly on Tuesday nights. And if you want more information, you can contact Jessica Richardson at pilotjessicar at gmail.com. Okay. And the Round Barn Golf Club at Mill Creek is going to offer a free golf cart tour for those who don't golf but would like to see the course. It is a very pretty golf course. A lot of trees, a lot of water. You bet. Nice looking course. And uh, that's sat this Saturday at 7 p.m. if you want to get a tour of, of what our city course looks like. Um, one of the nicer municipal courses around. You can cover the entire course and uh, they'll make a brief stop at the community swimming pool and the driving range too. Okay. So if you want to do that, please call 223-5717 and, and they'll get you signed up. Also, it's not too late for people to nominate their favorite history teacher, historian, or uh, organization for one of eight awards that's going to be given out during the Indiana Historical Society's annual Founders Day celebration, which is going to happen in December. To submit a nomination, or if you want to get some more information about, about nominating someone, call 317-232-1888. We probably have some deserving folks here in our community. And the Rochester football team is hosting a blood drive on July 26th as part of the Indianapolis Colts Leadership Challenge Blood Drive Contest. Yeah, it's next Tuesday. You are right. It's from 3 to 7, and it's at the high school cafeteria. So teams that host a blood drive with 30 or more participants will be entered into a drawing to win $2,500 towards the purchase of athletic equipment. Excellent. So that's the number we're shooting for, at least 30 participants. Uh, team, and that's D as in dog, 739. D739. So hopefully we'll get at least 30 participants and maybe our team can win some money for some athletic equipment. Good deal. We were saddened this week to um, to hear that uh, Jim Felke passed away and uh, our condolences to Jim's family. Um, great local family. Mm -hmm. uh, this morning we're giving flowers to the Rochester Garden to a uh, a couple who won the Top Garden Award from the Rochester Garden Club, and that's Brenda and Steve Fox, who live out on Bestmore Park Road near the Elks. They received that award this year. So drive by and check it out. You bet. It's part of the fun of the uh, Garden Club and Garden Award. You get to, <laughs> anybody can go see what uh, what's right. going on there. Got a beautiful property. And the Rochester Rotary Club is getting flowers today. Uh, they donated free pneumonia vaccines to the Compassionate Health Center to give to their patients based on need. Current patients of the clinic and uninsured residents of Fulton County can contact the clinic regarding eligibility. And their phone number is 223-6080. So uh, that may be a good time to get a pneumonia vaccine and protect yourself exactly. uh, heading into the fall. <clears throat> so thank you to the Rochester Rotary Club. Well, in money news, Gosh, what do we say about money news yeah, I don't these know. days? The market has had a pretty good week, though, overall. It, it has, and I think everyone's a little bit nervous about that. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are. Well, I heard a, I heard an investment advisor speaking to the Community Foundation this week, and he was saying that the United States may be the only game in town right now. If you think about the world as the as the marketplace there. Global investors seem to be seeking growth opportunity, which right. is hard to come by. Um, limited choices and then they're also looking for safety so that's having a profound effect on uh, United States bond rates uh, as more demand comes in the prices for those goes up and then the yield that they pay goes down so um, that's why at First Federal we're seeing home loan rates go down again sure we've been saying for three years on this program that that's probably not gonna happen right you know, <laughs> it won't last forever but it has for three years I <laughs> it sure has so we hit another low point on, on home loan rates um, last week because of this strange global economic scenario. Um, 
so that that may or may not continue but um, I think it shows that the United States is is pretty stable in the world and and other countries and investors are right putting their money here right now another factor of that Tom is uh, that negative interest rate yeah, we we're talking right, about exactly negative yield Japan was the first country to do that and I think we talked about that in February when I was on and now there's like 15 other countries doing that it's a big number, um, and it's a surprisingly big number, and a lot of them are European countries. Why do you invest, though, in a market like that? Why, why do you invest realizing that if you put $100 in, you're going to get 99 back? Well, I think it's just still seeking security. Security? Yep. Okay. But when Japan did that, an interesting note, uh, I heard from that same investment advisor, the sale of home safes shot through the roof. <laughs> I'll bet so too. And they had a shortage Cash all of a sudden. That's right? right. And they had a shortage of large denomination bills as everyone uh, pulled some money out of, didn't want to pay and uh, wanted to keep that at home. So strange situation and um, they weren't sure that that's really all that effective. Um, so I don't know if that'll continue very long. I'm, I'm certainly glad that's not the case here. So and I don't expect it to be. Right. It's kind of an interesting time. It is. It is indeed. I guess whenever you're living through history, you say that. That's but right. Makes living fun. Okay, well, uh, thinking about First Federal this morning, we're open until 5 today, and tomorrow we're open from 8.30 to noon in all of our locations. Our new ATM is always open. Come check that out. And if you were with us on Customer Appreciation Day and got uh, we helped you learn how to deposit into that ATM. Uh, try that out again if you sure. if you need to put some money in. Uh, we're not going to uh, charge you interest on that like some of the other countries. Go ahead and put it in, and uh, and you can do that even when we're not open after we're closed. We're so. all going to Winnemac today too, right? Yes, we're having our customer appreciation day in Winnemac today, and uh, we will be handing out uh, a uh, check made out to cash if you want to try depositing that in our new t new ATM in Winnemac. Okay. So we'll be there to help you out. We'll be serving lunch. Uh, Bill Morris also does a great job of making sure there's ice cream there. <laughs> I think we'll need it today. Probably. We've got a uh, shorts policy today that uh, we'll be employing as well to try to beat the heat a little bit. But we'd love to have you stop out at, at our Winnemac locations. Um, we're going to be having shredding bins out in the parking lot for you as well. So if you've got some old records or some things that are confidential in nature you've been storing forever for fear of, of, of throwing them in the trash. Bring them over today and you can put them in our locked bin and uh, we'll take care of that securely for you. And we're checking our mail for our new MasterCard too. Right? Yes, uh, a lot of customers have been receiving that MasterCard and uh, we've had, we send out 10,000 new cards and um, we're seeing a lot of um, um, authorization of those cards. When you get it, please uh, get that authorized right away. There's a little sticker on it to call an 800 number, uh, establish your PIN. You do answer a few questions about yourself for security, and uh, then you'll, your card will be operating and you can go ahead and securely shred or cut up your old debit card, your old Visa card, because you won't need that anymore. Okay. Um, our new card has a chip in it to make it more secure. Um, when, you, when you're at a chip-enabled terminal, uh, it un generates a unique code. There's no actual customer information traveling through and so it safeguards against some unauthorized use. It's harder to counterfeit and we um, it should limit and reduce some fraud. Excellent. So uh, good security for us and for the customer uh, which is all of you and uh, just remember when that card comes in the mail to get it authorized. And if you have more than one account with us and you get a couple debit cards on the page that it comes with it'll, t it'll give you the last four numbers of your checking account number so you can understand which card goes with which account. Excellent. Um, let's see. Um, <clears throat> First Federal is FDIC insured and an equal housing lender. And as always, our NMLS number is 399927. That's the one. That's it. All right. Okay, well, uh, welcome Leanne Isinger. Thank you. It's great to be with you again. It's been a long time since I've been with you. <laughs> oh yeah, like, wow, way back since high school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Leanne's daughter Amy and I were classmates in the class of 19, wonderful class of 1998, I should say, and uh, we got a reunion coming up hopefully in a, a couple of years. Sure. Yeah. Had a fun 10-year reunion. I cannot believe our 20-year reunion is coming up. I don't know what happened in the span between those, uh, but it's great to have you on this morning, and uh, we're excited to hear a little bit about the Indiana State Fair, and uh, also about what it's like being a board member. Well, 
thanks for having me and it's like to be a board member this is my seventh year and this will be my 50th year of attending the Indiana wow. State Fair. That's a great legacy. Yeah, I started going like when I was, my parents were 4-H leaders in the Woodruff, you know, 4-H clubs. And it's like, we'd catch a bus, Bob Tharp would be our driver, leave about 6 o'clock in the morning from Woodrow, go down, park behind the girls' dorms, which is now Discovery Hall, spend the day on the fair, stop by uh, fast food, and for a dollar, the 4-H club paid for our supper, and you could get your complete supper. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like, oh my, you know? Yeah, yeah. Now it'd probably be 10, 10 bucks a piece. <laughs> right, but that was our achievement trip. You know, we raised funds and, you know, took a whole school bus load of, you know, with some adults for chaperones and the kids. And so, you know, memories were made then and memories are still being made, you know, now. Well, I think at the at the tail end of the summer, I know school starts a little bit earlier now than it used to, but at the tail end of the summer, this is kind of the culmination of a, of a lot of tasks and work and I bet a lot of kids are looking forward to heading down just like you did. Oh yes, oh yes. You know, you know, like the the fairs moved up. It depends. The start time depends on Labor Day and okay. so on and so forth. But like you know, the legislation in the state of Indiana passed that you know a four H'er can attend you know or be gone five days and be accounted you know not have penalties because it's like this is part of who they are you know showing their livestock and so on. Yes. So so that helps them you know with the seventeen days you know it kind of makes it you know they. 4-H things are shown at certain times, but it's just, um, you know, what if a wonderful experience for these 4-Hers to... Schools are starting earlier now, which oh. is part of the issue, right? Oh, right. There's right. some schools um, that are starting like the, the last week of July, right. and so it makes it rough. But, you know, this is so important because, you know, Indiana is an agriculture state. Part of the mission is, you know, uh, agriculture, youth, and education with the state fair. So, you know, we're hitting on all those things, and it's an education to be a 4 hr and to get a animal or whatever project and work with it and to be able to exhibit it so you don't want to deny them that opportunity let's talk a little bit about that kind of the mission of the of the state fair sure it seemed like it started even before 4-h a little bit but uh, what what is it trying to accomplish what's the fair doing for our, our community well it's like you know it was it was started as an agriculture fair and it was held like in September okay. and it was the rollout of new um, innovations, new things, you know, like whether it be machinery, technology, the, be technology the best, you know, seed stock, whether it be animals or the agriculture. And so it was just a way to showcase all those things. And people came from all across the state. It's not always been in Indianapolis. It's moved okay. around, you know, um, and then when it moved back to Indianapolis, it was a military park. And then it's been where it's at now, you know, for several years. And there's about 250 acres there at the uh, Indiana State Fairgrounds. But it was, it was all based on agriculture. And then eventually, you know, the education and the other things just follow suit. Entertainment. Oh, yes. There's just a little bit of everything. I mean, it, it takes several days to really enjoy the Indiana State Fair because there's so much to see, so much to do. There are so many interests because it's just not for agriculture. I mean, there's all kinds of other industries represented, different... There's all the different kinds of things for people to go and see just besides agriculture. I'm sure it has a big impact on the local economy down in Indianapolis too, I would imagine. Oh yes, oh yes, because you have people, you know, not only is it just Indiana exhibitors, but like the open shows, people come from all across the United States and Canada because for the draft horses, you know, which there's four shows this year and those are all in the Coliseum, that's the latter part of the fair, but you know, people come from all over just to exhibit at the Indiana State Fair. What uh, what are the dates this year for the fair so okay. we can start preparing for it's it? It's August 5th through the 21st, so the first day is Friday, August 5th, and the last day is the 21st. Okay. And uh, what about some of the attractions this year? Well, one of the new things you were talking about are bison. Um, there's going to be a field of bison just uh, east of the soybean barn on the north side of the fairgrounds. Oh, fair that's going to be impressive to see. Right. So, um, and there'll be a voting. And the oil's um, going down for that, right? All right. Yeah, I read I that in the so. newspaper, <laughs> so it was like exciting. Um, some new attractions. Long run. Last year, they brought the bicentennial train, which is train cars with uh, pictures and history facts about Indiana. The old um, our land pavilion is going to be the bicentennial. Uh, celebration area which is on the south side of the track you know kind of across from the Ag Court building so that's ongoing the um, home and family arts is now the Indiana Arts building um, let's see there's just all kinds of new things there's gonna be Minnie Herford shown for the first time you oh, know cool. um, let's see um, with the Indiana beer and wine exhibition they've added spirits to that this year so it's educational as well as people can go in there 
You know, the craft brewing industry has really, really jumped grown, in especially the last in the few state years. for some reason or other. That's right. Both beer and wine. Right. Yeah. Well, and the new one in the last couple of years are spirits. You know. Yes, Indiana exactly. Spirits. Down in Southern Indiana. Right. And in around. Fact, we have a local restaurant that serves those spirits from Southern Indiana. Right. There's uh, South Bend yeah. has a couple places in yeah. Indianapolis, but you know you got to remember, folks. These are all made with Hoosier commodities. You know, right. this is part of the, the agriculture scene. Right. And it's just like, you know, you don't, you always think of corn, soybean, wheat, you know, oats and so on. <laughs> but it's like, you know, this is part of right. our heritage. This is part of, you know, people's livelihoods. We're speaking with Leanne Eisinger, local resident and a seven year member of the State Fair Board. We're really great to have you in this morning. So it sounds like with this being a bicentennial year, there's been some additional planning and, and preparing to kind of maybe make this a even bigger state fair than in the past with a little more impact. Sure, sure. Uh-huh. So this might be a great year to head down there. Um, very memorable year with it being the 200 year anniversary of the state. Leanne, let me ask you this. First time fairgoers going down, parking facilities, where? How okay. do I get there? Okay, well you come down, you know, if you come off of Keystone or you come off of 38th Street, you know, there's, there's a the gate on the south side that you can get in or gate 16 up in the northwest corner um, parking is five dollars okay. uh, for the day for the day okay. parking is usually in the infield there's also Indy go and ride that like you can park up at, uh, off a of keystone at the um, mall there and you know there's shuttles that go um, but there's different places that you can park people were coming by the Indiana Fair train and I read in the newspaper there's some issues there but about 15,000 people a year were coming in from Fishers mm -hmm. on that fair train that comes in, they come in at gate six, which is off of Fall Creek, but there's a uh, parking, you know, on site, okay. limited, you know, it's like first sure. come, first serve. Sure. Um, but it's just like, you know, parking is available. Same way with like your tickets, you can get, you know, online beforehand. I want to mention that this year there's not the program, there's a brochure, but you can go download the app, you know, for to plan your day, to plan where you want to eat. There's all kinds of things that you can go with that app. Well, that's and a nice touch. Can you say fair app? Yes, it's the Indiana State Fair app. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you can go check that stuff out with the technological world. Sure. Um, you can just plan your day. We did Actually, something like that at Disney World last year. It was really, really made it a lot easier to mm -hmm. figure out Navigate what you wanted to do. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I was a little nervous about that trip, but with an app like you're talking about, it can really make it kind of efficient and seamless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, let's see. Are your, your involvement with the board. Are there any committees that, that happen throughout the year? How, what kind of things do you get involved with not during fair month? Okay, well, we meet once a month, okay. the second Thursday in the afternoon. Um, they kind of change things up. We're more of advisors now than we are total hands-on. And That's so good. besides the advisory, you know, like I oversee Band-Aid cheerleading, youth talent, baton, and the cat <laughs> show. You know, um, That's a long list. And it's like uh, that first weekend I start with youth tal talent on Friday. I have it Saturday, Sunday. I have Band-Aid, which is really big on that Saturday. There's 48 bands this year. Um, but then we also have committees. So a lot of times those committees will meet at 3. We have our board meeting at 4. And so there's just always something going on. How many board members are there? There are 17. Okay. There are 14 that are half are elected, half are appointed, and then there's three of ex officios, the Department of Ag, the um, Governor's Office has an appointee, as well as Purdue Extension. Okay. And do you get involved with that through kind of through the Department of Ag, or what kind of oversees that? The Department of Ag holds the elections in okay. which they're staggered, um, so the Department of Ag does that, but it's just, um, it's it was established and they over, kind of oversee, but you know, um, the state fair is a quasi-government. Okay. And so, you know, it's like we all serve, whether you're elected or appointed, you're all set at the same board. We all roll our sleeves up for the good of the cause. Leanne, as I recall, the last couple of years, the goal has been to get a million visitors. Yes, it has. Did last you make that yet? No, we haven't <laughs> made that yet. You know, and I think, you know, some of that attributes to school starting. Sure. You know, and so on and so forth. Um, like last year, I believe, don't quote me, but I think it was like 970,000. Yeah, it was close. close. That's very it was close. close. It was close, right. You know, and right. it's really hard. Um, but you know, with with all the the weather is a big factor and school. I think those are our two biggest factors. Okay. Now, is, does it depend on what kind of uh, acts you get in for performances too? Does that have a big play on the attendance, or is it not? Is it kind of irrelevant? Because I remember reading in the past that there's been some famous people that oh, have yes. come in and performed, like oh, the yes. Beatles oh, and Johnny oh, yes. Cash. Right, right. Years. There's been some really great performances and so on. Um, now this this will be the second year. Well, it's the first year that there's not any performances in the Coliseum. Okay. But this is the second year they've had some we're gonna have some really great acts at the free stage. Because once you get in, 
you know, you have to pay for food and souvenirs, but the, the actual performances are free. And that holds about 5,000 people, you know, open air seating up on the north side of the fairgrounds. Okay. But they have some really good acts, and a couple of the radio stations are sponsoring Excellent. some acts. Um, in fact, let's see, um, let's see, Granger Smith's going to be there, Maddie and Tay, um, Neil McCoy, the Happy Together Tour. The Bacon Brothers, you wow. know, I saw them, you know, one of the Bacon Brothers on the Today Show the other day, but, you know, there's a lot oh, of great, great, there's a lot of great, you know, things there up on the free stage. I think the fair's been noted for that, for good entertainment for years and years. Right, and there's also the Main Street stage, which has had a lot of, you know, people. Johnny and Sally have been on the free stage before, so, <laughs> you know, the local, local folks, you know. That's right. And then what about awards? I know the State Fair is close aligned with 4-H. Are there interesting awards? Um, Oh yes, um, there's all kinds of awards and stuff, and this will be the third year for the Celebration of Champions. They don't do a, a livestock sale anymore. It's Celebration of Champions, with people donate, the kids get a set price, you know. But the Celebration of Champions is a really big thing, you know. Instead of, you know, people paying a big fee, the kids all get kind of the same, and they honor, you know, not only the livestock but the rabbits, gardening, honey. Each type of thing. There's several things, and they're going to start adding That's more. Great. But but the celebration of champions is a really big. It's, there's a dinner before it starts with the families and the board, and then you know it's open for the actual celebration. But it's a really neat thing to honor those top four H'ers. All right, Leanne. Um, thinking of this year's fair, why don't you give us your best pitch for the <laughs> listeners out there? Sounds like it'll be a good time. Well, it's just like you know the memories that were made. I mean, when we took our kids and the livestock for 11 years, it was just not us and my kids, but it was my parents as well. And the memories that are made are just priceless. So it's just make your trip down to Indianapolis. It's well worth your time. And there's so much to see and do. And as I said, you can't just do it in one day. And like, you know, I want to I appreciate my husband because, you know, without him, I couldn't do this. You know, he's the one that checks on things here at home and he keeps the home front going. And it's just like it's really a family effort, you know, with the Indiana State Fair. Let me put, let me put in a pitch, too, for the new Highway 31 because it makes it easier to get down to Indianapolis now. Oh, Absolutely. Right. Yeah. 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 The day trip's a little bit easier. Yes, now. it is. Well, thank you. We've been speaking and enjoying speaking with Leanne Eisinger this morning about the Indiana State Fair that's coming up August 5th through 21st. Thank mm -hmm. you, Leanne. Thank you. Evan, yeah, before we wrap this up, I had a question about banking. Can we go back to this from, Absolutely. from a listener? We were talking about the MasterCard. Yes. Let's say you have automatic withdrawals from the card that you already have. Are you going to have to switch those over? You need to make sure to, to take some time to do that. Okay. Now you've got a, a couple a week and a half here to so get... the numbers will not be the same as what they were on the old card? Nope. Okay. Brand new numbers. So um, we have been speaking to customers about that specifically. If you've saved that in somewhere for an automatic payment, um, or you've given that to somebody to charge automatically, you need to uh, take the time to contact that or go online, whichever way you've done it, and change it to the new card so there'll be some continuity there. Scott's got a lot of that going on, so I'm going to check for it. <laughs> it's going to take me a week to change it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. We'll help you out. Thank you. <laughs> well, the Indiana State Fair is a long tradition, and we're going to find is. out here just how long. So uh, when did Indiana have its first state fair? We've got... The first A choice, 1852, B was 1868, and C was 1892. I'm sure our expert will know. Leanne? <laughs> What's that first one? 1852. Wow. It was organized before the Civil War even happened. I, I can't get my head around that, but uh, it just shows you how important agriculture has been to our state even from the beginning. And when I was reading about this a little bit, it was the sixth state to have a state fair. So, it, uh, you know, we've been on the front end of this the entire time. Wow. And can I interject? We're Absolutely. one of the few state fairs that are still strictly agriculture. A lot of them have turned into commercial trade shows and so on. And Indiana has such strong roots that, you know, we're still one of the agricultures. And we always tell, you know, we're, we're kind of one of the best, you know. <laughs> we believe it. I think that speaks highly, though, for, for what you and the board are doing right now to keep it that way. Thank you. All right, and our words of wisdom this morning, uh, this, this week it's from Lori Grenier of Shark Tank fame. And her quote is, I've always believed you hire character and train skill. Well said. I like that show. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Evan Gottschalk, Leanne Isinger, thank you very much for being Thanks, here on the Tom. first federal Thanks, program. Scott, good to see Thanks, you as Leanne. always. Buying your first home? Let the experts at First Federal Savings Bank help you through the process. At First Federal, all of their mortgage loans are serviced locally with payment options that are convenient for you. Their staff will work with you answering your questions and providing professional service. First Federal will even pay standard closing costs for qualifying first-time home buyers. Just another way, First Federal takes care of you, your local mortgage lender.